Hi, this is Jawe Khan. I'm a professor in the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So I, I'm going to discuss how deep learning on graphs can get help from text mining. As we can see, deep learning from graphs ha actually has been a very hot research topic. But the one thing we may want to ask is where are the massive semantic reach graph come from? And so we see there are lots of diff different kinds of graphs. For example, biological networks, bibliographic networks, social networks, World Wide Web, or cyber physical networks. These gigantic graphs, we, if we want to study their mining, one important information is where are the rich semantic information? Of course, the graph structures give us lots of very rich semantic information. However, usually they have lots of text associated with those semantic con constructions. So we need to study is how we should use a text to do mining on text-rich networks. For this, we need to think about how we can do network construction from the text, how can we do structuring, or text augmentation on large existing networks. That brings a major challenge for constructing net text-rich networks, just because texts are very high-dimensional, hidden structures, they have taxonomy information, they are interconnected implicitly. There are lots of issues. So in our group's research in the last many years, we have been working on how to mine unstructured data for structures, especially on the text data. So our general philosophy is we do not want to use heavy human supervision because they are not scalable. So what we work on is based on large unstructured text corpus and a general knowledge base and we want to do, say, phrase mining, typing, entity information extraction, and rely on, say, taxonomy extraction, multi-dimensional text analysis, constructed text-rich information networks, then we can do mining. So let's look at uh, how can we construct from unstructured text to massive structured graphs. As we may know, in the early days, people were thinking one hot vector to represent a word. However, this is very high dimensional and it's very sparse. Recent years, people study the learning representation using distributed representation. Simply says, we map the high dimension space in a relatively low dimension values. Okay. Then, for example, the uh, famous Google to Google's word to back is try to base on the plus or minus k, you know, the surrounding text, try to map them into a lower dimension, like one to two hundred dimension space. In that context, we actually can mine, for example, uh, man and woman could be in the closer space if you draw a vector there, then king and a queen can be sitting in some kind of parallelogram uh, with, you know, men and women. Okay. So besides there, that, there are lots of different methods developed. Okay. If you think about recent years, the development, we can see from context-free embedding to deep contextualized embedding is a trend. Start from word to back, people were, actually were thinking about from a Euclidean space, we go to hyperbolic space, we go to sp spherical space. And also to study deep contextualized uh, embedding, people are actually using different kind of neural language models. For example, use unidirectional language model getting like a GPT, those series of methods. Using bidirection language models, people get a ERMO, Bird and subsequent development like Roberta, Herbert, XRNet, Electra, and many other models. 
our recent study found uh, actually is very useful thing is instead of thinking completely unsupervised, what about a human input some knowledge to do some weak supervision? For example, using category name to can guide the embedding. Uh, let's look at a wide example. If you see this example, for example, it's a Theresa May and a, a Donald Trump can be embedded in a closer space if we were discussing about politics versus science versus literature. However, if you are more interested in distinguishing England from the United States, then Theresa May, William Shakespeare, and Isaac Newton can be mapped in a closer space because they were all from England. So with this idea, we develop uh, this uh, computation. Essentially, is uh, we look at a plus minus k surrounding a word. This is more like a word vac. We use word, the probability of a word in the document. This is more like, uh, say, topic modeling. Then we use the category guidance to, to see the probability of a document in the category. By taking all these probability into consideration, we actually can use weak supervision plus those EM like that, you know, method. We can do nice computation, embedding, and a clustering. What we'll get, for example, we can use weak supervision, like in New York Times. If we want to compare Britain and Canada, okay, if you use RDA, latent deletion allocation, the typical topic modeling method, you actually can see those words are not very sharp. However, if you use this category guided embedding, you actually can see Ontario, Toronto, Quebec, Montreal, Ottawa. Uh, embedded closer to Canada naturally without any supervision. Similar things if you want to distinguish education versus politics, or you, you want to go to Yelp data to distinguish burger versus desserts, or good versus bad, you actually get a really good results. Okay. With this, we actually tried in 2019, we did a KDD demo using text analysis uh, for Hong Kong protests, okay? the general philosophy is if we take very small number of supervision, like three C's for each category, then we can get a, the remaining one from the corpus without any other supervision. For example, if you see uh, under police, you actually will get water cannon, pepper spray, petrol bomb, beam, being backgrounds or fire, firing tear gas. Okay, for for like information, you get different kind of information, even like internet censorship or different kinds of media that's related to, to information. So th this shows actually it's quite interesting. Without human supervision, you can get lots of topics in a distinctive way. Okay, not only get a one level, you actually can get a multi level. Suppose you give us a skeleton, okay? Under the skeleton, suppose in the lower level, you want to get a hormone, enzyme, vitamin, and vaccine. You see, we go through like a PubMed data, we actually can get these vaccine, uh, vitamin, get the corresponding words out in a very high quality way. This can be done to do hierarchical topic mining. Not only that, we actually can automatically construct conceptual hierarchies. For example, the first thing for conceptual hierarchy is you get the same level of concepts like Georgia, Illinois, Virginia. You want to expand this concept to get other US states. Can we do this automatically just based on the corpus? Okay. So the general philosophy is taking the seeds, we find their skip grams, their context features. The context feature can be partitioned into several different groups. For each group, you can rank, evaluate, you can get a few interesting candidates. Of course, you may get some noise, like a Quebec is a Canadian province, it's not a US state. However, with rank ensemble we develop, it. that means each group can rank them, then they ensemble them together, you can get those constant ranking high 
like Arizona, Florida, California, can be more confirmed as new seeds. Then you can add to the existing ones and you can turn around. The next iteration likely will do even better. Not only that, you also can take the seeds and generate not only the new expanded new seeds, but you also can generate negative data. Instead of throwing away those negative data, those data themselves can be clustered and expanded in parallel to guard against the rear one you want to expand. Then you can get, guarantee the quality of the expansion can be improved. Not only you get one level, you actually can do multi-level, like a, using a multi-level skeleton taxonomy. You can expand in parallel or spend in depth. Okay, that means in parallel from U.S. and China, you can get a Canada, Mexico. In depth means you actually can go down from Canada, you can get a Canadian provinces. And in reality, people may not give you a very, uh, you know, just a skeleton one. People actually give you a pretty large existing hierarchy, maybe constructed by human. Then how can we further expand it when we get a new words, new concepts in? We actually develop a one method called Texo Expand. That means expanding the existing taxonomy. Okay. And we take the existing taxonomy as a lot of training data based on their, their parents' child relationship. Then we can kick in a lot of techniques on the embedding. We can work out a lot of high quality expansion. And here we show we insert more than 2,000 new concepts in the existing taxonomy, which have more than 20,000 existing nodes. Uh, we show a few. Uh, the errors, we want to analyze them. You probably can see, sometimes we may get error, but the, actually it's not that bad. If you look at the, this email hacking, uh, our predicted parents could be internet privacy or hacker, but the true parents is computer security. You actually can see, even humans sometimes may say, your predicted parents was not too wrong. So that makes things you know, can be further justified by human to, to make it automated generating or semi-automated generating the new expanded taxonomy. Okay. With those taxonomy, we actually can do a lot of text classification. That means you give me a text document, so I want to put this one uh, into the right class. Can we do this with weak supervision? That means we only need a very small number of seeds. We may be able to generate a pretty large set of documents with good class classification label. The general philosophy we work out in Coral West class is weekly supervised text classification. The philosophy is taking this weekly supervised, uh, like either from the label, uh, the class label, or from a few seeds in each class or a few labor documents from each class. Then we use pseudo document generator and we feed those generated documents into deep neural networks. And with the deep neural networks trained, then the new unlabeled documents putting in, we will be able to give them the right class label. Moreover, we also exploring the pre-trained language model, like BERT. Okay. For example, you based on large unlabeled text data. We want to generate from sports, generate soccer, generate baseball. We can use pre-trained language model to replace the category name. Then we can generate lots of very high quality you know, uh, vocabulary for each category. And using this generated vocabulary, we can do quality classification. Okay. Moreover, uh, we actually can do it for multi-label text classification. So-called multi-label is, you give me a document, I do not want to return one label. We, I actually want to return a few very close approximate labels, which may help me to do classification and e explain this document. Okay. Can we do this 
without supervision by giving only a large corpus and a taxonomy? Okay. The answer is we can. How can we do this? The general philosophy is we can go down, for example, uh, taking a new doc a document. Okay. The document may contain something about uh, information retrieval, suppose. There are candidate classes. How can we find those candidate classes? The general philosophy, why is we use top-down exploration? Top-down means you start from computer science. You do not know which this document should belong to. But at the top level, you actually can see it's easy to distinguish whether this document is about information retrieval or data mining or computer theory or hardware. And suppose you get two nodes marked, either it is information retrieval or data mining, then you can go down to the second level. And that level, you may say, this document is closest to which one. You can base on those relevance model to get it. Okay. Then those very close to the one, you can mark them as a core class. For example, like this one, they say when our son was about four months, our doctor said we could give him craft the cereal, so we bought it. So this is the review comments. And but you based on this, you know, you do the classification, the similar documents, you actually will find the core one, the most similar one could be craft the cereal or baby cereal. Okay. Based on this, you actually try to find their parents or common grandparents you will say those are the multi-label, which likely could be the high-quality labels. Okay. With this philosophy, we actually can do very good high-level, multi-level text classification. Okay. And with this, you probably can see with uh, the step-by-step, -step, we actually can construct massive structured graphs from unstructured text because we can do lots of things here, and we can dig out documents. We can put them into the right class label or construct the graphs. Okay. Now I'm just showing you one example we did in this year's Wisdom 2021. Is we actually did is suppose we have a text-rich graph. That means not only we see each paper side the other paper but also we see their concrete corpus. That means titles, abstracts, or even the full text of the paper. Okay. With this additional information, what we can do? Okay. What we can do is this. Okay. There are two things we can refine this graph. One thing is for the words within those documents, the words, actually some words are closer. You can find similar words. Uh, how we should find it? We actually use BERT, use WordVac, use Jose, use our methods. Okay. Then we can modify the original graph. The original graph is if these two words share a common inside the same document, we link them together. Actually, if they are very semantic, very close, you also can link them together. If the semantic is pretty far away, you can break them up. Okay. And the similar things for text. If you find the text, they actually belong to almost the same class, but they, you do not see their citation. You can build the links, say potentially these papers could cite each other. Okay. But also if you find they belong to very far away classes, even inside the paper, you think they are not so related, you can break them up. With this modified document network and a word network, we can do joint convolution. With this joint convolution, we can feed in to the deep uh, uh, you know, neural networks. And that means using the deep graph neural network, we actually can do things, but before we do uh, deep graph neural network algorithm, we actually first do the text mining to refine our network to make the network semantically more coherent. Okay. Then the final result you can see actually is uh, better compared to many other methods. Okay. So what our study basically is 
are going to pass this message. The message is mining real massive networks of graphs. We need to consider construction and mining text-rich information networks. That means if we want to do effective deep learning graphs, we cannot avoid mining text-rich networks. To mine text-rich network, we need to think in mining structures from unstructured text and doing text network construction, doing structural augmentation of large existing networks. Then the key research issue becomes why is how to mining structure from text, how to do text-rich networking construction, and then how to mine text-rich structure heterogeneous information networks. The, the progress has been done in the two frontiers. One is deep learning for text data in the NLP, in uh, representation learning, in text mining. Another research frontier is deep learning on graph structure, DLG. So we think the, the best way is integrating these two research frontier will lead to mining information text-rich networks. Okay. So our study actually in the past on data mining, we're actually going moving from data to the networks, to mining networks. Then in the recent years, we have been studying how to mining how to mine text. Finally, we can integrate this two frontier to lead to new progress. Okay. So our work has been funded by a, a lot of you know, federal or you know, like industry. And also our research paper used in this, paper, this talk, I listed here. Uh, the interesting thing is uh, one uh, PhD student who spearheaded this effort Jiaming Shen will join Google Research uh, in two months. And Yiman received a 2021 Google PhD Fellowship. And Jia Xin, that's another first author, received 2021 Microsoft Research PhD Fellowship. That simply says, along this line, there are lots of things can be done. It can be very fruitful. Thank you.